What's up everybody, it is Bourgeois here, and today we are going to be talking about the modulation section in the Helm Synthesizer. So modulation is essentially a way to add movement to your sound, and as the uh, manual puts it, the modulation modules can change an audio or performance control over time to make dynamic or morphing patches. So first I want to show you how to map modulation. Um, the first thing you would do, it, the first thing to note is that if you see these little gray little helm logos, they're actually supposed to be helmets. So first what you would do is you would click on the gray helm logo, which would be a modulation source. It's a helmet and basically when you click on it, it becomes blue to communicate that it is currently selected and ready to modulate. Then a green overlay appears over all the controls which are available that you can modulate. You can then pick a control and then click and drag on it to begin modulating. Um, I'll show you actually here I have a plucky bass sound. And say I want to add some movement to the filter I can then just click on the slider here and then drag it as far as I would want the modulation to go. And then I can play it to show you. And that gives you kind of, um, that can add more movement to sounds and you could do a lot of different things with modulation to really make your sounds more interesting. And so basically when you're done, you can then click on the Helm logo again and it will take the modulation section off or that part off. And you could still see a, a little indicator where there's modulation. Another way to know that there's also modulation applied is that the face inside of the logo turns green. And so you can then refer to that later if you're trying to find out which modules are being modulated with what. You can then look for these little green little faces inside of the Helm logos. The next thing to talk about is the envelopes. So the envelopes in Helm are basically the ADSR, the attack, decay, sustain, and release envelopes. They are polyphonic, which um, they are one instance per voice and are useful for bringing in, uh, or bringing in and fading out a value like amplitude or filter cutoff of a voice. The amplitude envelope is automatically hooked up to the amplitude or loudness of the voice. The, the filter envelope is automatically hooked up to the filter cutoff and the amount of the effect is controlled by the envelope depth control in the filter. And the mod envelope is an extra envelope which you can use for modulation. So to understand this, we can break this down into three parts. That's the modulation button, the graphical envelope, and the ADSR sliders. The modulation button essentially allows you to modify a synth control with the LFO. The graphical envelope is basically an envelope which is drawn in this section and you can see the envelope progress through the stages as you press and hold and release the key, basically as you play the sound. You can also modify the attack, decay, sustain, and release by clicking and dragging in this section. Next we have the ADSR sliders. This is where you set the envelope values and the graphical envelope to the left will then change to match the slider settings. So I want to discuss basically how to use the envelope. There's basically different stages of the envelope that are based on basically the current keys press that corresponds to the voice. As an example, we'll look at how the amplitude envelope affects the loudness of a voice over time. First we have the attack, which the envelope is triggered when a key is pressed, which brings it into the attack phase. The attack slider determines how long the envelope takes to reach full value. If you have a short attack on your amplitude envelope, the volume of the voice will start loud. If you have a long attack, the voice will fade in over a period of time. The decay and sustain basically indicate that once an envelope reaches its full value, if the key is still held down, the value will fade to the sustain value. How long this takes is specified by the decay. 
once the value reaches the sustained value, it stays there until the performer releases the key. Lastly, we have the release. The release is basically any time the key for a voice is released, the state will jump to the release, which fades the value to zero over time. A short value will kill the voice quickly. A long value will fade the voice out slowly. I'll demonstrate that right here. In this specific patch, I have a uh, sharp attack and I meant it to have a plucky sound. So I actually have the sustain at zero because when I hold the sound down, I don't really want it to... Uh, keep it sound I want it to just decay out really quickly but I also put the release up a little bit just so it doesn't have such a, an, a an abrupt stop to the sound it can kind of just fade out a little bit so say if I increase the attack you can hear it kind of has a different sort of sound it kind of fades in over time then if I say increase the sustain you'll actually hear the sound continue even when the key is pressed down If you notice that when it was at zero, it would just kind of fade out. Then we have the release, which will, will I can increase that fade out, say. If you notice it goes really long. Or I could have it just abruptly just cut off. Next we have the LFO. The LFO stands for the Low Frequency Oscillator. The value of a low LFO pulses back and forth in a pattern determined by the waveform. You can use an LFO to create vibrato by modulating oscillator tune controls, tremolo by modulating uh, sliders in the mixer or global volume, or you, you could also do sort of like wubby sort of sounds by modulating the filter cutoff. We can understand the LFO in three parts. That is the waveform selector, the modulation button, and the frequency. The waveform selector sets the timbre of the oscillator so it works in the sort of the same way and you have the same waveforms as all the other oscillators you also have a modulation button and this allows you to modify a synth control with the LFO last you have the frequency and the frequency controls how fast the LFO pulses on the right is the frequency control type where you can select uh, you can select seconds, tempo, tempo dotted, and tempo triplets. Next we have the step sequencer. The step sequencer is a modulation source that cycles through a series of steps. To understand the step sequencer, we can break this down into five parts, and that is the step sequence, the modulation button, a uh, number of steps, frequency, and slide. The step sequence, uh, you can set up each step in the sequence in this section. The modulation button uh, allows you to modify a synth control with the LFO. The number of steps determines the step sequencer length, it sets how many discrete steps you can set and cycle through. Then you have the frequency, which controls how fast the step sequencer advances. On the right uh, is the frequency control type, where you can select the seconds, uh, tempo, tempo dotted, or tempo triplets. And then you have the slide, which smooths out of the value the step sequencer gives. At zero, there's no smoothing and the value jumps to each step. With positive values, the value decays toward each step smoothly. Last for this section, we have the keyboard module. And the keyboard module can be broken down in to basically six parts, which are the aftertouch, note, velocity, modulation wheel, pitch wheel, and random. The aftertouch, basically with aftertouch enabled keyboards, if you have it, you can uh, map pressure of the key to modulate a value. Using a non-aftertouch keyboard, the velocity pressed is used instead. Next we have the note. The note is basically how far or down the keyboard note is. MIDI note zero gives a value of zero, and MIDI note 127 gives you a value of one. Then there's the velocity, which is how fast you hit the key. This only works on velocity enabled keyboards then you have the modulation wheel which would be the current value of the modulation wheel on a MIDI keyboard if you have that as well and then um, if you have a pitch wheel on your keyboard that would be the current value of the pitch wheel on the key on your MIDI keyboard and lastly would be the random which is every time a key is pressed this will generate a random value that you can then map so that basically covers it for this video. I hope you found this one helpful. In the next video, we're going to be going over some performance and other usage. So stay posted for that one. I thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time.